when that I, that self, the ego, is mis misconceived. And it's when it's in its isolated self, uh, individualized form, that is called false ego. And it's when it is recognized as to what it is for, and it's as in its relationship to God, to the absolute, to the ultimate truth, then it becomes a, a real understanding, a real knowledge of self. Self understood in its isolated, central, cent centrified form, a centralized form, as the center of things, that is a false ego. But when the when the self is understood in its relationship with the real center, true center of everything and everyone. Then it is come becomes the true ego or the true self. There's no ego there because the ego means the, that I unify everything within myself. But the real unity thing is not myself. There's a purpose to this world. I mean, I'm not the purpose of the world. <laughs> I can't figure that out for myself. I can't uh, hold myself responsible for whatever is going on in this world. I think that everything is happening for me uh, by my command, by my will. That's ridiculous. I, some people think like that. <laughs> they try to become the lord of the whole universe, you know. I won't mention names. <laughs> but we are part of something greater than ourselves. When we say we, I immediately take myself and expand it to that, that I become a part of a, something wider than myself. I, I and we are not the same thing. But I am part of the we. I'm included there when I say we. I don't feel it is something totally different from myself when I say we. When Jesus gave the Lord's Prayer, he said, Our, our Father. Started with the uh, we. Huh? In the United States uh, Constitution, what is that? Uh, Declaration. In the United States Declaration of Independence, what does it begin with? We, we the people. people. No, yeah, we. <coughs> that is very important to us distinction and then to understand the relationship between we and I. There's a difference and a, and, a, and, a, and a similarity at the same time. Difference and an identity at the same time. So we must understand ourselves in this wider perspective. And not only we, when we say we, we mean all the people. But there's also animals, plants, and so forth. They're also uh, truths. who are also part of, of the reality and that, we are, that we are living within. So that we is, extends beyond just a, we as a people, or as a country, or as a, a planet, or as uh, inhabitants of a universe. Um, there are many other creatures, species, that I can't say we, yet they also have consciousness. They are also part. So the highest conception of totality is what we call God, the way we identify. Or in our case, Krishna. Uh, God is not nameless, not impersonal. He has a name also, why not? And millions of names. <laughs> why should we restrict God? <laughs> we can have many millions of names. We're not a problem. Something so great, so inclusive. Why you should be restricted? How we can restrict that? Infinite and no restriction. Can't be restricted. As soon as we restrict the infinite, it's no more infinite. As soon as we think a restriction on the infinite, the infinite has become, we finitize the infinite. It's not the infinite. So now, then the question is, becomes, how do we, we don't go too long, so this way we can have another part of the program also. What, how do we, um, how do we connect? We come with that center, huh? That supreme center. Good question. Good question. Yes. <laughs> See, I asked you the question before you asked it. So she's always asking good questions. So I, I'd like to bring about this, uh, uh, bring up this thing that is mentioned here. In the fourth verse, we read, 
uh, O Lord, although you are able to give all kinds of benedictions, I do not pray to you for the boon of a personal liberation, for the highest liberation of eternal life in Vaikuntha, nor any other boon which may be obtained by executing the nine processes of bhakti. O Lord, I simply wish that this form of yours as Baha Gopal and Vrindavan may ever be manifest in my heart, for what is the use to me of any other boon besides this? So, I wanted to mention about these nine processes of bhakti and the boon that they offer. <laughs> So these nine processes are called in Sanskrit Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Padasevanam, Harshanam, Vandam, Dasyam, Atmani Vedanam. Actually, there's eight, but. Hmm? Sakya. Yeah. What did I miss, Sakya? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. These processes, what are, what are the meaning? Shravana means hearing, to hear. How, how is hearing? Of, bhakti means devotion or dedication, giving your life, connect, making a connection through love or devotion with, the, with that which is higher than yourself. That's called bhakti. Bhakti actually comes from the Sanskrit, bhaja. Bhaja means to worship. You worship that which is greater than yourself. So once we understand that we are part of something and that we are for something, then automatically worship or bhaja becomes a significant feature of our lives. So we begin that process of bhaja, of worship, with uh, an activity from the heart, so therefore we call it love or devotion. It begins with shravan of hearing. If we use our ears, our hearing capacity, to hear about these things to and to use this hearing to remind ourselves, use it as a, a means for remembering, for thinking about, then this is called shravan of hearing. All our ears should be used for is this, a devotee, one who is fully devoted to Krishna, doesn't want to hear anything about, you know, who's going to be president, <laughs> or who's doing this, or who's doing that, and so many other things. They only want to hear about Krishna, about how how can I remember my Lord? And how can I, that remembering or hearing help me to make that use of, use of my ears for that purpose only, for always connecting me with that higher realm. That's Shravanam. Kirtanam means speaking or singing or chanting. Kirtanam. So how can I use my voice to only vibrate those things that are about Krishna because this voice is for him, then let me use this voice for his sake. Why should I use it for uh, blabbering about so many different things? <laughs> These other things that I'm blabbering about are all about this world and connect and therefore they, they, they are utilized only for this purpose of this uh, sphere of existence, not for that higher thing. So let me use my ears my hearing, Shabram, Kirtan, my voice, my tongue, for speaking about Krishna. And the other use of the tongue is, by the way, tasting. So also not only speaking about Krishna, but also tasting only food that has been offered to Krishna. And not all this kind of McDonald's and burritos and all these things, <laughs> whatever tacos and whatever people are involved in eating. That's not don't get involved in all that, but try to remember how to use this tongue for connecting with the Supreme. And we have a full life of connection between, just between hearing and chanting, between the ear and the tongue, we can get so much benefit, so much progress in spiritual life if we can utilize these things for that higher purpose, properly, for that higher purpose. Shravanam, Kirtanam. Then the next one comes, Vishnu Smaranam. Smaranam means remembering. You know, when you go to school, it used to be, they would have the kids sit down and re and they'd say one plus one is two, or one times one is one, uh, two times two is four, three times three is nine, four times four is eight. like this. They would have them repeat the multiplication tables, for instance, right? And then by that tongue and hearing, 
repeating and by the tongue and ear, they would what? Remember. What would come? Memory. They would memorize. So if you ask the kid, what is uh, four times four? Immediately they'll say 16. Not that they know what it means, <laughs> but they, they because they heard it and said it so many times, immediately they'll know the answer, right? To remember. So Shravanam, Kirtan, Vishnu, Swaramans, if you're talking about Krishna, if you're hearing about Krishna, talking about Krishna, then what's going to happen? You're going to remember Krishna. It's called Vishnu Smarana. Vishnu is another name of Krishna. And is also a name, Vishnu Swarana means Krishna consciousness. Remembrance? If you're always remembering, you're always conscious of Krishna. This is Vishnu Swarana means Krishna consciousness. Remembrance of Krishna all the time means Krishna consciousness. Shravanam, Kirtan, Vishnu Swarana, Padasevanam. Now, if we get into some type of use of the body. What am I going to do with this body? I've got my 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 tongue and my and my ears and my memory all involved. Now what about my body? Now this is called pada sevana. Pada sevana means service, and pada means feet. So service at the feet of the Lord it mean, means basically very humble kind of service. Don't go in. Oh yeah, I'm a servant of God. <laughs> Not like that. In a humble way. I'm a humble servant of God. I am completely dependent upon his mercy. Otherwise, I am simply a fool. Insignificant. I have absolutely nothing going for me. <laughs> Who am I? Huh? But my Lord, I am somehow connected with you. This is my only claim to fame. <laughs> you can say. Somehow or other I'm connected, but I don't even know how that is. So, but I want to do whatever I can in your and your staff for your satisfaction. It is called Parasevanam. Parasevanam. Archanam. What we were doing before, worshiping. Singing. Yeah. What we were offering, offering oh, the lamps. Holy candles. We were offering the lamps to Krishna and the Guru and Mahaprabhu. That is called Archanam. Worshiping. Direct worship. Right? Ritual, you can call it ritual. But it's more than ritual, it's not just something we do automatically. It's something we do because it inspires us in a way. It helps us develop our devotion by using our body to worship God, do something. Archana. Vandanam. Vandanam means praying. We're in so many different situations of life. How often do we pray to God? My dear Lord, you know, it's a kind of remembrance also. But it's more than just remembrance. It's a kind of uh, talking hmm, conversation. My dear Lord, you are so wonderful. Uh, don't pray for, I want this, I want that. That's not, <laughs> not that kind of prayer. Huh? Devotional prayer means, my dear Lord, you are so wonderful, so gracious, so merciful. Hmm? I don't deserve. You have given this whole life, this whole existence, this whole world to us. You manifest this. Not for us, but this is a, a manifestation of your amazing grace, of your amazing qualities, uh, of your beauty, of your sweetness, of your charm. How much do we appreciate you, what you are? Huh? That's prayer. Pandanam. Pandanam Sakyam. You relate to Krishna as your friend. You are not my enemy. You are. I've given you are giving so much, and I am uh, simply going on your on your going on, uh, knowing that your grace is there, and without that I would not be anywhere. So I depend on you, and you are in some way depending on me too because we're friends. Huh? We have some mutual um, relationship and the activities that we're that I'm engaged in. Some mutual. Uh, uh, relationship there. Sakyam. Then Atmani Vedana. Atmani Vedana is a, is a very high stage of uh, what we call it Sharanagati, surrender. Where a devotee doesn't know anything but Krishna. He doesn't know any 